enforces, judicial interprets, those are all power. Hi, welcome back to Mr. Raymond's Social Studies Academy, where today for part two of our U.S. history class, we're going to look at the exploration of the Americas. Most of us grew up singing the song in elementary school. In the year of 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. In learning about this monumental voyage, which was the discovering of America, when Columbus made this famous and sometimes infamous voyage, the age of exploration, as this period is referred to, had already kicked off in Europe. So what led to this age of exploration? For most early U.S. history classes, you need to know why European countries, especially Portugal, Spain, the British, and the Dutch, began this competition to explore and settle these new lands. You need to know some of the major explorers and the impact that this would have on the settling of what would become North and South America, and that's what we're going to cover today. But first, just a reminder, teachers, that this PowerPoint with lesson plans and a variety of resources are available at Teachers Pay Teachers. Just click the link in the notes below this video. So first, let's look at the causes of this age of discovery and exploration. After the fall of the Roman Empire, there really was no powerful nation states in Europe to fill the vacuum that they left behind. And this period is often referred to as the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages or medieval times. There were kings in these days, but the vast majority of the people were peasants controlled by local nobility in a system that was known as feudalism. Starting around the year 1000, in what are referred to as the High Middle Ages, advances in farming led to a rapidly growing population in Europe. Around this time, military expeditions known as the Crusades were led by Europeans seeking to capture Jerusalem and the Holy Land from the Muslims. And these crusades brought Europeans into contact with Middle Eastern cultures and exposed them to Middle Eastern goods. And they also led to increased shipbuilding and trade among these different parts of the world. Traders began expanding their reach in search of these popular goods, bringing wealth to what were now becoming European nation states. Around the 14th century, a period known as the Renaissance took hold of Europe as advances in the sciences and arts spread knowledge throughout the region. One development, the creation of the printing press, helped extend information about shipping and trade as people began to learn about worlds outside of their little corners of the globe. Technological advances such as the astrolabe, the compass, and quadrant helped improve navigation, allowing for sea travel in the open ocean away from the sight of land. New, faster, ocean-worthy ships such as the Carrick were developed, which were sturdier and large enough to carry more supplies, making long voyages on the open sea more feasible. An economic theory known as mercantilism, which led to trade competition throughout Europe, this idea of mercantilism, in which a country wanted to export more than it imported, put pressure on European leaders to seek out colonies whose natural resources could be exploited. Of course, traders also needed to make a profit, and at this time the most sought-after luxury goods, such as spices and silk, were only available in far-off Asian lands, which at the time required long overland journeys like those along the Silk Road or through Egypt, which connected the Mediterranean to the Red Sea. We have a phrase to describe the reasons that early European explorers ventured out into the unknown, which is the three G's of exploration, glory, gold, and God. Glory describes the fame and honor these explorers sought, rightly so, as we still tell their stories. Gold speaks for itself, they wanted to get rich, and God speaks to not just the explorers, but to their financial backers' desires to spread Christianity throughout the world. Portugal took the early exploration lead, backed by one of their rulers, Prince Henry the Navigator, a patron who created a navigation school and financed early expeditions along the coast of Africa. With these voyages, the age of exploration had begun. 
The Portuguese explored the coast of Africa starting in the early 1400s, and this led eventually around the Cape of Good Hope at the southern tip of Africa, providing a sea route to those sought-after Asian ports. You can also see from this map that in 1500, just eight years after Columbus's voyage, the Portuguese discovered Brazil in South America. Of course, the famous journey of Columbus in 1492 marked Spain's entry into the age of exploration. Columbus, an Italian, had found financial backers in Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain to seek a new route to Asia. He promised them riches, and Queen Isabella, a devout Catholic, also wanted to spread Christianity. On August 3rd of 1492, Columbus head out in three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, not down the African coast, but headed west, thinking he could circle the globe to reach Asia. Two months later, Columbus landed in the Caribbean, claiming these new lands for Spain, and thus the quote-unquote new world was discovered. Or was it? We should point out that Columbus was not the first European to make contact with this new world. Viking explorer Leif Erikson, known as Eric the Red, established a small temporary colony in present-day Newfoundland, Canada, around the year 1000. But it's Columbus who helped initiate what would lead to the European competition to settle these new worlds. Now, it's important to remember that none of the Europeans knew there was a continent located between Europe and Asia. Since Columbus thought he had arrived in the East Indies, islands located off of Southeast Asia, he referred to the natives living there as Indians. Columbus would make three more voyages to the Caribbean after heading home to a hero's welcome, all the while not realizing that he had discovered a new continent. It would take Italian explorer Amerigo Vespucci sailing off the coast of South America for Portugal to conclude that this was indeed a separate continent. In honor of Amerigo, map makers would begin referring to these new lands on maps as America in his honor. As the competition had heated up between the Portuguese and Spain, the Pope stepped in to help settle their claims to these new lands. The Treaty of Tordesillas drew a line splitting the new lands between the two powers. In the meantime, Spanish explorers had been granted permission to create settlements in America, and these explorers and their soldiers are referred to as the conquistadors or conquerors. And who were they conquering? Well, the native peoples who lived in these areas. In upcoming videos, we will look at the devastating effects these explorers and their settlements had on the native populations. The treatment of these people, who we often refer to as Native Americans, was horrible. From their earliest contacts with Columbus, who tried to enslave large populations or more brutally killed, this marked the beginning of massive amounts of death and devastation for these native populations. While a large amount were killed in battle, the overwhelming amount died from the diseases that Europeans brought over, as these native populations had never come into contact with these germs and bacteria, and therefore had no immunity. Again, we will look at the unfortunate plight of these people in upcoming videos. In 1519, conquistador Hernán Cortés conquered the Aztecs, a very powerful force who dominated northern Mexico. Twelve years later, another Spanish conquistador, Francisco Pizarro, traveled down the west coast of South America after having crossed over to the Pacific Ocean around present-day Panama. He and his soldiers sailed down and conquered the Incan Empire located in present-day Peru. So Spain would go on to conquer and colonize vast amounts of land in the Americas, including half of South America, most of Central America, and much of North America, including Mexico, Florida, the Southwest, and West Coast of what is now the United States. Here is a look at how these lands would be divided up more than 250 years later in 1780 around the founding of the United States, with Spain in green, Portugal in purple, and the British in pink, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. 
The relationship between the Europeans and natives was complicated and it varied drastically depending on time or place and it wasn't always hostile. These two peoples whose lifestyles were totally foreign from their own did introduce new goods to each other and what is known as cultural exchange. The Spanish introduced horses, metal tools, cattle and sugar and the natives introduced them to tobacco, potatoes, tomatoes, and corn. This cultural exchange would influence a great new flow of goods, especially foods, in an extensive trade system between the Americas, Africa, and Europe known as the Colombian Exchange. Meanwhile, it wasn't just the Spanish and the Portuguese who had their eyes on foreign trade. The English, French, and Dutch sought a route to Asia as well, thinking that they could travel west above this new continent in search of what's referred to as the Northwest Passage. Explorers like Henry Hudson, who sailed for both England and the Dutch, and French explorer Samuel Champlain, discovered not a Northwest Passage, but vast new lands on the North American continent for their European backers. These three countries would soon compete with Spain to settle and develop these new lands. All of these explorations would help drive the creation of what would one day become the United States of America, which is where we will pick up next time. But first, let's review. What was the economic system Europeans lived under in which the nobility controlled all of the land? This was in the early Middle Ages. That was feudalism. Advances in farming during the High Middle Ages led to an increase in population. These military campaigns led to increased trade with the Middle East, the Crusades. This period of advances in the arts and sciences helped fuel the age of exploration, the Renaissance. This was the economic theory practiced by European nations which helped fuel competition to trade. Mercantilism. What are the three G's of exploration? Gold, glory, and God. Which was the first country to kick off the age of exploration and the name of the prince that started it? That would be Portugal and Henry the Navigator. Rather than looking for the Americas, the first explorers were really looking for trade routes to Asia. Most Native Americans who came into contact with the Europeans died of what? Disease. Name three things the Europeans introduced to Native Americans. Metal tools, disease, horses, livestock, and there's others. And that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe because up next we are going to look at the first colonies and settlements of North America. And just a reminder, teachers, that this PowerPoint with lesson plans, smart board files, worksheets, and a variety of other resources are available at Teachers Pay Teachers. Just click the link in the notes below or go to Teachers Pay Teachers and search for Mr. Raymond's Social Studies Academy. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Keep up that good work.